Hello, welcome to Off The Shelf Reviews. I think I howled myself to the seventh level of hell. And I'm Gary, and today we're going to review and discuss Howling 7, New Moon Rising, which came out in 1995, written, directed, produced, and starring Clive Turner. <laughs> Ian, why don't you give us the synopsis? Well... The story follows Clive Turner's character, Ted Smith. Ted is a journalist who is heading to a desert town, Pioneer Town, to investigate some of the locals. But some mysterious characters from Ted's past may arise. I knew it was going to be a bad day when I got up this morning. You mean to tell me that the victim was killed by a, a werewolf inspector? So there's very limited amount of sort of production notes that I could find on, on this film. <laughs> but apparently uh, Clive Turner wasn't the original director for the film. It was someone called Roger, Roger Knoll. And apparently he walked off the set. <laughs> like, you know, he had, he, you know, because of course, as we've heard, Clive Turner just likes to take over yeah. and, and, and make everything his. And apparently when the film had finished production, they'd wrapped filming. Clive Turner got everyone back together and went and filmed another 50% of the actual film because he didn't like what the original director had done. But mm -hmm. like, I take all that with a grain of salt because I don't, I can't verify any of these comments that I've seen surrounding this film. Yeah. Man, like, like when we said we were going to start doing the Howling series for Halloween, like part of me was excited but, like, you know, we had a bit of a rocky journey, and this name kept appearing, Clive Turner. Clive Turner. And I completely missed it in number five, that obviously Clive Turner was Ray, you know? And then realising that he wrote, produced, directed, and starred in this one movie. I also think he edited this film as he well. He probably edited, and probably financed, and probably... Shot the, uh, found the locations, you know, and probably just did absolutely everything for this movie. That I'm, I have to say, Clive, like you seem like a really cool dude in real life, but please never, ever, ever, ever make another Howling movie, <laughs> ever, because you, you just can't. You just there's, the, this isn't a Howling movie. This is a long lost sequel to fucking Every Which Way But Loose. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because there there is no there's no one in this film that is an actor. Like this No, really. really? <laughs> this is a real town yeah. and these are all real people in their real everyday lives in this town. So it it, it 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 feels like it. Actually, you know what? It feels like it. On one hand, if you're asking about a mockumentary movie thrown together on a shoelace budget with just real people, it works. Well, it it works because it's so amateurish. Well, that's the thing. One of the one of the uh, things I read about this film was that it wasn't supposed to have any sort of wraparound footage, but this was supposed to have been a clip show of all of the previous Howling movies. It is a clip <laughs> show of the previous Howling movies, with, with the intention of bringing this entire muddled universe of Howling movies together in a in a in an understandable continuity without the first one that actually laid the groundwork yes and the, the second one that had Sybil Downing in it yes no 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 like it starts it starts with them finding a body you've got three people finding a body in the desert and they they're talking about how the circus has just left you know, and so this body is from something happening at the circus. And you might sit there going, ooh, howling the freaks. They're calling back to the circus. No, 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 because they killed the vampire, remember? And they walked off. Yeah, but... Ah, oh, what? But Mary Lou the Rougarou was at the circus, remember? Yeah, so... I know. I'm getting to that, Gary. And we see these three cops in the desert talking to the detective. Now you'll get to meet the detective a lot in this movie. I don't really know his name. I think one of the actors says his name at one point, but the audio is so bad. I made up names for everybody in this movie. If I didn't get your name, then I'm really sorry. I'm really sorry. But the body is linked to the circus and possibly... I thought it was a woman who was killed. Right, yeah. I, I honestly thought, but it turns out that actually that's a man's body. 
who tried to steal a handbag from Mary Lou who was at the circus. Mary Lou from the fifth movie as well, you know, the one set in the castle. And this detective goes and meets Father John, played by John Huff. And, you know, I want to say they're really bad actors, but they're not actors. They're not actors. He's a real detective? No. Oh, okay. He's a real priest? <laughs> no. <laughs> well, maybe they are. Who knows? And they just sit there and they read out the script. And for 40% of the movie, we are just following these two guys retelling us stuff from Howling 4 and Howling 5. This th th this conversation of the backstory and and this goes yeah as you said into forty minutes at least an hour into the film oh, yeah and yeah. and this conversation lasts like four days <laughs> it felt like it there are it does feel like it and there are several instances in the film where the detective is just like oh this is too much I need some fresh air oh whoa, this is getting too late I need to come back tomorrow for you to finish this story and I'm like. How is this taking so long to explain? <laughs> like to us, the audience, it, it's only like a minute, you know. But in 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 their time, it, it's hours are going by, and we, and it is a clip show. We get to see footage of of Howling Five, Howling Four. We yeah. see the castle, we see, you know, sequences that you've seen, obviously, from the previous reviews that we've done, you know, because these were the main focal points for those movies, and the priest is giving us this background. Now, at the same time that we're getting all this information, we're following Ted, uh, played by Clive Turner, who is rocking the badass, you know, red hair, I must say, you know, and the cowboy biker look, and he pulls up into Pioneer Town. It was horrible sitting through that edited sequence of the of the detective driving and him yeah. driving yeah. To, to get to Pioneer Town. And then Clive Turner for... Well, the other 60% of the movie, you know, we're following him around this town, getting to know everybody, chatting to Cheryl and Harriet and Pappy and Bob and Bron uh, I, th I think his name's Brock or Brosco, the other guy who sits at the bar, you know, and they, they just drink and dance to line dancing music. <laughs> and I'm like, no, no, I, 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 what the fuck? I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not a line dancing expert, no. right? But that's supposed to be a fun activity. Yeah. These people look so miserable. I can only imagine Clive Turner at this point has had them line dancing for like 12 hours straight. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So now I haven't got the right shot yet. No, keep, keep going, keep going. And yeah, you just, well, like a lot of it is just really quick edits. You it know, is so a lot many of it montages. Is edits and montages. It's just footage thrown together. So sometimes I'm like, no, he just filmed this on the fly. You know, like when you've got the la the lady in purple who's on the stage with the guitar and she's singing. You know, I think she just happened to be there that night. They well, she'd yeah, been yeah. signed, and he thought, I'm going to film this, and he records her whole song, and we sit through the whole song, and I'm like, what the fuck? This is not a howling movie. Where the hell is Sybil Danning? I'll take Christopher Lee any fucking day over this fucking... But we, 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 need, oh. a, we need a comedy skit where they're all wearing oversized sombreros oh. and, and cleaning. Oh, fuck. We, we, we need a As somebody who cleans, you do not sweep and then brush behind them. That's just stupid. And then what are they doing? Attacking a rat? Killing a cockroach? <laughs> They're doing something. But I, you, the film just drags like a fucking snail's ass. And then you cut back to the priest and the detective breaking the continuity of the other movies. Now, I watched... Four, and I watched five, so I m might know some fucking shit, but when the priest fucking tells me, what does he say? First off, the castle in Budapest, you know, where 
the pre, where the, the, the guy with the sword at the beginning had poisoned everybody. Right. Had poisoned everybody. He didn't run them through with swords. No, on the <laughs> orders of the Vatican and then killed himself. You know, but the but the but the body uh, the baby survived, and then he obviously talks about it's this massive religious fucking thing about Satan. Satan possesses, Satan possesses people and turns them into werewolves. The being that killed that man is none other than our adversary, the devil, in a lycanthropic manifestation. You want to subtitle that for me, Father? Is is that law? Well, I guess it is in this franchise now. Oh, right, okay. Remember when was the time when you needed a silver stake to the heart to kill a werewolf? You remember when you needed a silver dildo to the ass? What? <laughs> but he also breaks the continuity when he meets up with Marie from number four. Now, Marie, uh, the actress playing Marie, she's working for some kind of company which has hired Ray, or Ted as we come to know him as, to go to this town. The priest changes Ray's name into Ted and tells us that he survived number four. Bullshit! Oh, yeah, like... The way this film presents it is that he walks away in the storm and lives. Mm. Yet, yet it, like, it doesn't show the footage, of course, of the werewolf bursting out of the snow. Well, but, I, th but this Howling mm. 7 actually shows footage of Ray Ted, Ray Ted. La laying face down in the snow, and they were like, yeah, and they, they left me for dead. Yeah. It's like, no, you were fucking dead, mate. You were fucking... The thing jumped out and got you. I fucking saw it. I mean, we, we could just edit that bit out and say that he survived, but that means he's editing the whole fucking movie. But like Gary says, Ray Ted... Goes, uh, you know, is, has, has survived and gone to the town. And we find out that Mary Lou had also survived. And that David had been found dead. Because the Count had given, given his side of the story to some people who found him. The Count was dead! Yeah, yeah, I, I know. I, I, I saw it. Well, we didn't see him. We heard the gunshot and she left him. What tour guide? And I... The guy on the coach who must have come back to find him after the blizzard. So he survived the entire blizzard with his gun. Okay, okay. He must have driven to the local village. Because this the film's villagers... supposed to tie all the films together, not make it worse. It makes it even worse when Marie explains to the priest that she obviously had been had gone to this colony, um, well, this town with her husband, and they had been attacked by werewolves. So the, the fourth movie they edit to literally just be the story moments that we were supposed to get from, like, the remake of the first one. Right. And they completely fucking edit Janice out from right. the end of the movie. She says, like, oh, I had to go and hide in the bell tower or pretend to hide in the bell tower. I'm like, no, you didn't. You lured all the wolves in there with Janice and she sacrificed herself so that you could get away. Yeah. And you didn't because the end of that movie is the werewolf jumping at you and you're screaming your last breath. Or did she? Maybe she had a mental break and some villagers found her in the fucking snow. That must have been that bloody tour guide. <laughs> But while they're all discussing how the other movies panned out and how Ray Ted survived, Ray Ted is in the town and he meets up with Big White Hat. Big White Hat comes into the town and gets really drunk, but turns out that he's actually working with Ray Ted with Marie to find out the secrets of Pioneer Town. But during the night, Big White Hat is attacked and killed by a predator. Oh, I mean a werewolf, but it looks like a predator. He visit. was attacked by a red filter. Yeah. <laughs> and, oh man, like I said about how them cutting the deaths was just horrible. And I felt really bad because I saw the big white hat guy get killed. And then we also see like the, the hick guy later on who, he has a bit of a fucking one-on-one -on -one with Ted. And, the, you know... They both get killed by this red filter off screen. And I really wanted to watch Final Destination 4 and 5. Like back to back, because at least I'd fucking see something. So far, this film has presented us zero amount of werewolf content, excluding the, the footage from the previous movies. Yeah, which is just fucking just padding, you know, <laughs> because that's, this, that's what this film is made up of. 90% of it is literally padding and the rest of it is line dancing.
fucking satanic <laughs> line dancing and and, and 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 people sitting around campfires playing guitars and singing about their prescription beers. <laughs> I think I'll sit here with my prescription beer and never do drugs again. And footage of the priest and the detective spending days like there's no urgency here. He explains to the detective like that these werewolves you know, like there, it, it, like when this next full moon occurs, it would have been three years. Oh, and then yeah, this, since this, Mary Lou escaped from the castle, it's been three years. It's been three years, okay? And yeah. so now that she is at full power, that's how long it takes for a werewolf to get to full power. Three years now. Like Sturber? Right. The werewolf well, That was bitch? like thousands of years. Well, I don't know how power works. I don't know how this fucking law works. And so she now has the power to infect and turn other people into werewolves. But not only that, yeah. we find out that the werewolves have the ability to transfer their souls or their consciousness into another body. But what if she's in disguise? It's just that a disguise is really hard to maintain. Not necessarily, Inspector. Not if she has taken over the body of another person. Body swapping, possession. Yeah. Taking over a completely different new disguise. So Mary Lou that they've been following throughout most of this movie and they've all got the same photo of her from the same fucking snapshot from the movie, yeah, isn't isn't going to look like Mary Lou. So it could be any one of the townspeople. It could be any anybody. And, and they're trying to implement Ted as the werewolf. But the whole time Clive Turner is playing Ted like the smoothest, funniest, smartest, most charismatic... Most you would have never hurt a fly type of guy throughout the whole entire movie. You, there is nothing you'll get from any of the footages of Ted that make you go, oh, maybe he's a fucking werewolf. And you don't get it from any of the townsfolk either. Because all of the townsfolk are just amateur actors who are just reading lines off of a toilet roll probably given to them. I, I there was a there was a love interest for for Clive Turner's character that I dis I missed the name when they mentioned her at the beginning of the movie. So I had to call her Sheila throughout the whole entire of making my notes because Clive Turner is Australian and I thought it would be funny that Sheila and he has this love interest and that's probably next to Pappy's diet of water because he's not allowed to drink alcohol after his second heart attack. The love interest between Clive Turner and Sheila is probably the best storyline in the whole movie. Because it's it's the one that Clive Turner puts the most focus on, you know, him chasing this girl and then just getting on with all the townspeople. But secretly, he's also making recordings, tape recordings about his expose that he's going to make on them and how, you know, why does he love these guys? And it's it, it's not a werewolf movie. It's a, oh, he, he loves this girl. Um, but she's going to find out. And she does find out because he, he accidentally leaves the tape line out and they play it at the fucking campfire guitar singing moment. While, he, while, while Ted is off, they play this tape and they hear him talk about how they're all kind of the dregs of society to, and they've come here to find just a life for themselves and hide from their secrets. And it's fucking bullshit. It's it's fucking bullshit. It really fucking is. There's no fucking werewolves. They the cops turn up, don't they? Oh yeah, there there is a, a cop that turns up because all of these bodies keep turning up. You know they had a all moment... of these bodies like two. Well, yeah, <laughs> they think it's like a, a mountain lion or a, 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 a desert tiger. I don't know. They think it's some wild animal out there that's desert doing skunk, the killings. Yeah, a desert skunk, and uh, and uh, yeah, he ends up interrogating. Uh, Ray Ted at one point <laughs> and uh, he ends up letting letting Ray Ted go well Ray Ted beats the shit out of him because Ray Ted has to uh, yeah yeah to get away and, the... and and then the red filter returns yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then the cop is also killed off screen yeah and right at this moment like this is where like the film's only an hour and a half and it seems to take fucking ages but then the whole ending is so badly edited well don't forget we also bring back Marie from 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 number from number four. Yeah, yeah. But I mean, she was dead at the end of that film. But no, they brought her back, and I can't believe the actress came back to do this as well. Yeah. Only for them to kill her off in this one. The yeah, the red filter breaks into her house, and we think it's Mary Lou because Mary Lou says, "Oh, it's me, Mary Lou," and she's thrown off her balcony. So that's how werewolves kill people now. Balconies. Uh -huh. <laughs> 
But Ray Ted, after the cop, right, the cop is just killed. And Ray Ted runs back to his motel room to get his money that he got from Davis after Davis had been killed for getting this expose. Keep up. <laughs> Ted, Ted is stopped by the detective who's turned up at the town with the priest because they've heard rumours that there's a guy who could be connected to the other movies. <laughs> and and they, they interrogate him. But they it's such a quick edit of them interrogating, cutting back to then the priest and the cop in an office talking about interrogating Ted and then talking about how Ray Ted escaped and one of the other characters who we've been following, Jarl, who's just this background character, um, is, is killed in flashback sequences. And I couldn't believe it that Clive Turner had edited these flashback sequences into what was supposed to be a sequence anyway just to quicken over the time it leads it makes no sense it's supposed to implement that there is another killer because they captured ted and ted isn't obviously the werewolf so when they when the priest goes back with the detective to ted's cabin he's just like i'll 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 watch ted detective you go off with the guard and all of a sudden the priest is knocked out or he's been he's been he's been picked up off the floor by Cheryl, another background character, and she's like, "Oh, Ted's escaped," and the priest is like, "I'll go tell everybody," and he goes walking off, and Cheryl goes into the cabin and she looks up into this attic space and she's like, "Hey, Ted, you can come out now," and Ted's like, "Oh, brilliant, thanks," you know, and I'm like, "What the what the fuck? Cheryl's helping him now? Doesn't she think that he's the web? Oh." Oh, that's right, movie. Because you've got to play the old switcher here, haven't you? Cheryl is Mary Lou. And Mary Lou had killed Cheryl and taken her body at some point prior to the movie to wait for or to hide in the town. Uh, and, and it just so happened per chance that Ray had turned up in the town to do the expose. Coincidence, he eh? <laughs> He nods. He's like, I know, don't know, <laughs> maybe, <laughs> you know. You're the werewolf. Don't you recognize my voice? You've heard it before in Budapest. Mary Lou Summers. Right. Good guess. You set this up. Everything. Because I don't know. Do you want to tell them about the transformation sequence? Well, <laughs> you know. <laughs> The, the big reveal occurs and you know this is the thing like she, she's she got this gun she's got him at gunpoint and she's just like oh she looks at the clock and she's like well I can't do it yet <laughs> yeah she does she's like I've got to wait until the full moon comes up before I kill you because how else will anybody believe that I've killed you and I can frame you as the werewolf and then it fades back again she's like right now I guess it's time to kill you yeah <laughs> it's like, okay okay so you just sat there like, just, uh, for eight hours and so she shoots she shoots Ray Ted and I'm like yes Oh, they were, uh, no, they, they, they were fake rounds. Yeah. They were dummy rounds. Because? Uh, and, and then the cop steps out from behind the corner. How long was he waiting back there he, for? He just steps on screen like, we've got you. <laughs> I'm like, oh, and they just basically tell us that the priest and the cop realized that somebody in the town was in on it. And so they changed the bullets to allow Ted to escape so they could capture Cheryl. The yeah. Werewolf. And she's like, well, I'll just open the curtains now. And, oh, look, there's the full moon. I can transform now. Is that, is that how it works? Yeah. You have to be in full <laughs> moonlight. Yeah. Like, a vampire has to be in full sunlight to die. A werewolf has to be in full moonlight to... The transform. Oh, my God. <laughs> well, I, I say it, transform. <laughs> Like, oh my, it is, it is an atrocious looking werewolf. But at the same time, I'm just like, well, at least this film has one. I was beginning <laughs> to think we wouldn't get any at all. Yeah, yeah. And then, uh, and, 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 oh my God, fucking Clive Turner's reaction to seeing a werewolf in front of him. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> and he runs out the door. I probably put too much, uh, 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 it was just Emphasis. terrible. Yeah, because he just runs outside. And the villagers are all waiting outside with guns. And we don't even see her get shot. No, she it just, just cuts to the moon as we hear the gunshots. That's it. 
she bursts through the door in that slow mo effect that we'd seen in number five. Now you must like you must like doing doors and werewolves. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my god, that's fucking terrible. And we cut. We cut back to the bar with the same lady singing a song about a cleaning lady. But that's it. She says, oh, I'm really sorry, Ted. And then they sing in the credits. And I'm like, oh my god. How did I just sit for an hour and a half of that? I mean, I worked it out. I, I fucking, I fucking worked it out after, you know? So... Howling 2, Howling 3, Howling 4, Howling 5, Howling 6, and Howling 7. If I go on an average of an hour and a half for each one of those movies, yeah, that's what? Three, six, nine fucking hours just kind of wasted, just wasted on this series. Like, like I, I sat, during Howling 7, I sat and I was thinking about Hellraiser Judgment. Looks pretty good now, doesn't oh, it? Oh, <laughs> fucking like, woo, like it looks. Chris four, <laughs> please, please, <laughs> Jesus Christ! You know, like you look at a horror movie and people go, "Man, I fucking hate it when that series goes downhill." And you go, <laughs> like, <laughs> well, and did you have any memorable or favorite scenes from Howling New Moon Rising? I did. Actually, there were moments in the film that I didn't know if I should laugh or slip my wrists. What kind of wolf killed him? A big one. That was actually a line between the priest and, a, and the um, officer when they're talking about the body that they'd found at the beginning in the desert. When they're talking about it being a guy. And I was I, I, I wanted to rewind it to check because I'm sure it was a blonde wig on this skeleton. And it's a skeleton! It's like... It's a, it's a fucking skeleton. You died yesterday. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know, but it, yeah. Just any of the discussions between the priest and the detective, the, the detective's reactions to the priest delivering his lines is just so fucking rough and, and amateurish, but at the same time, so kooky and funny. Like, he's a real guy. That's a, somebody's grandpa having fun in a movie. Yay. Along with Sybil, the tea lady. Oh, yes. So when Sybil, the tea lady, turns up and does her speech about her son. Oh, if you ever get to Barstow, maybe look him up. Uh, lady, we're in Barstow. Oh, I, I just don't know where I am. She made me think of the auntie from Sleepaway Camp. Sure. Like, that's an acid trip. The toilet urinal scene. Yeah, like, uh, the, you know, when I, when I want to hit home about a horror movie, I want to film... Of where it shows me two guys talking about how small a urinal is. But one of them gets confused thinking the other guy's talking about his penis. Ha! 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 It was funny! Yeah, this urinal's small. I wrote this from the bottom of my heart. You reckon it's small, Ted? Well, it's small, isn't it? Cocktail wing, bro. <laughs> The necrophilia joke from Ted. Like, I, I know some pretty bad jokes, um, but when he came up with that one about flogging a dead horse, I did laugh. And I thought, you know what? Everybody else should hear it too. As a matter of fact, bro, I'm in a necrophilia, sadism, and bestiality. Ted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah, but I think I'm flogging a dead horse. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, that's, that's, that's it. I'm good. Yeah. I'm good. I'm good. Well, I, I got none. No, got no, none. no, no favorite scenes. No, no memorable. I got scenes. you covered. I got you covered. You, you pretty much went through all of the the highlights. I guess there was one edit that I just like. I, that was at that point that I was like, I, I give up. And it was the sequence where there's one guy at the bar drinking his drink, drinking the other the, drink, the glasses, adjust his glasses. Oh my god! And Ted Ray's next oh to him, god. and they do the same thing. Oh then there's another guy next to him, and they do the same thing. And it was just like, and and all the while. This horrific, the, the horrific music, especially that that guitarist, it was just like. Bow, bow, bow. And it does it throughout the entire film. Who's George Jones?
It's awful. I think it was actually probably Clive Turner. Probably, probably yeah. Probably yeah. Clive Turner. <laughs> well, Ian, do you recommend Howling 7? I will give you three fucking guesses. Yeah, take, take your time. Yeah, I'll, you know, what do you think? No! Just, just, no. Just, just, I, like... Like, this is the seventh one in the series, okay? I'm, I'm, not, I'm not doing it anymore. I'm just not. I'm, I'm, I'm not. I know there's still one left. And I'm like, no. Just fucking no. I can't. I went... I thought two was bad. I really... I always kind of lived with the thought that two was bad. But two... Two is nothing. Red Brown is a fucking... Oscar winning actor some fucking days of the week. I thought three was bad, but you know what? Mm, yeah, I love you. When you actually go with four, five, six, and then you get to seven, you just can't, you just can't, you just, no, 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 no. Nope. There is no way in hell I'd recommend this film to anyone. And I even struggle to classify this experiment as an actual movie. This is a train wreck. It's carnage. Like you'd slow down, you know, to see what the damage was in passing. <laughs> like a morbid curiosity. <laughs> Except you stop, get out of the car and line dance. Because you had, you had no <laughs> hand in this fucking film's production. <laughs> yeah. This trash deserves to be buried and forgotten. It's a total dumpster fire. It's poor, miserable in the production quality, utterly lifeless in the story... And, and the pacing is devoid of any humour, if that's what they were going for. The acting was dreadful, as was the script, the music, the dancing, the effects, and the direction. You know, Clive Tur Turner wanted total control of the franchise, and you fucking blew it, man! I will say that Claude Allen, who played Pappy, was, <laughs> was great. And I hope they finally got your drink right, wherever you are now. Yeah. Only watch this. If you hate yourself. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. And you need to punish yourself. Ooh. Watch it to see how far the Howling series got before it eventually died. Or watch this if you're having a hard time sleeping. Because apparently, somewhere out there, a new terror is breeding. Well, I see a bad moon rising. Thanks for watching Off The Shelf Reviews. <laughs> Such a big mistake with a handsome dog like me. Oh! I think I'll sit in here with my prescription beer and never do drugs again. <laughs> <laughs>